Radiology modalities, these will be just a couple that we will go through that are going to be the ones that are highly used for the thoracic region. This is an oversimplistic quick primer on a few highly utilized imaging modalities that occur when imaging the thorax. Each modality choice in clinical medicine rely on one of the following, transmission of energy, reflection of energy, or emission of energy. Again, this is just a quick identification of some common modalities. The first line in the vast majority of cases is the chest x-ray. It's quick to get and it will help rule out a number of issues, even if the presenting symptoms may be something more likely identified with further imaging. CT imaging. This is the workhorse of the thorax. It provides much more detailed imaging and a number of variations of this mod modality can be used with regard to the imaging women Joe and the use of contrast. This modality, however, has a relatively high radiation exposure to the patient. Ultrasound is very safe and like chest x-ray, a rapid way to evaluate the patient. This can be used bedside for critically ill patients and is a primary tool to accompany interventions. Nuclear medicine is not something we've addressed or seen previously, but I wanted to introduce it as a modality for you to be more aware of to be addressed in more detail later. The VQ scan is a ventilation perfusion scan that interfaces imaging of the vasculature as well as gas distribution in the airways. This combined evaluation can detect issues concerning both these anatomical regions, such as occurs with the pulmonary embolism. A PET scan can identify high metabolic activity and therefore is great at detecting cancer. Let's use a pulmonary embolism as an example. Here are some basic symptoms a patient would present with. Chest x-ray is done first as a screening tool. Further evaluation will be CT angiography. For angiography, dye has to be used to highlight the vasculature. How is dye introduced into the body? The dye is injected into a vein in your arm and the dye enters the thorax via the subclavian vein. Depending on what you want to look at, imaging can be taken any time along the vascular tract that the dye bolus is traveling. Let's review the vascular pathway the dye would follow so we can find the sequential chronological order of regions that the dye would travel. What vessel would you expect the dye to first highlight just before it enters the heart? The superior vena cava. Now entering the heart, which side would highlight first? That would be the right side. First the right atrium, then the right ventricle. Here's a CT showing the right atrium and ventricle with dye, which is much brighter than the left side of the heart. When the heart contracts, what is the vascular system that will receive the dye? That would be the pulmonary vascular system. On the CT slice taken just superior to the heart, we see the contrast highlighted pulmonary trunk and right and left pulmonary arteries. Notice that the descending and ascending aorta have not yet received the contrast dye. This is a pulmonary angiogram. It's ideal for evaluation of a pulmonary embolism. Now the contrast has completed its pulmonary circuit, it'll enter the left side of the heart, left atrium, followed by the left ventricle. When the left ventricle contracts, contrast enters the aorta to distribute throughout the systemic circulation. Notice the aorta goes up and back. On the CT at approximately this level, we, we can see the ascending aorta marked by an A and descending marked by a B. On the CT image, notice that the aorta is now slightly brighter than the pulmonary arteries. This is now in the arterial phase. Now that we know what CT pulmonary angiography entails, the next imaging modality that can be used for this scenario would be the VQ scan, mostly if contrast on the CT is contraindicated. However, there are a number of other issues for VQ scans outside of this condition. A VQ scan is the imaging of the airspace, which is the V part or ventilation, and the blood perfusion is the flow part, where Q is the universal letter for flow in hemodynamics. To summarize this patient scenario, always start off with a chest x-ray, even if all things are pointing to a PE, as the chest x-ray may show additional issues or rule out other differentials. The main imaging that will show you if a PE is there is the CT pulmonary angiogram where the contrast highlights the blood in the pulmonary arteries showing the perfusion pathways, vascular dimension, and presence or absence of a clot. Finally, a VQ scan can also show regions of the lung that may or may not be perfused via blood 
as well as air and can be used to interpret a PE if the patient cannot tolerate contrast. For a patient with a lung mass that may be cancer, the chest x-ray is again the first line imaging. It'll detect the presence of a lesion. A CT will provide more detailed characterization of the mass, where it's located and what tissue or regions are involved well beyond what an x-ray can provide. Finally, a PET scan uses tracers that will concentrate in the tumor that will emit energy that can be detected to provide more specific information about the metabolic activity and the extent of the metastasis if it has reached that point. A possible scenario for this condition may begin with detection on a chest x-ray, followed by further delineation and determination or extent or bounds of the mass by a CT, and then to evaluate metabolic activity of the mass, identification of possible other active sites with a PET scan. For a patient presenting with a traumatic chest injury, again, the imaging begins with a chest x-ray. This is quick, easy to complete, and provides a considerable amount of diagnostic information. With time of the essence in a trauma patient, ultrasound is the next likely modality as it is so easily accessible, portable, and provides a wide range of evaluatory parameters over many areas of the body. For the chest, it's often used for evaluation of fluid, accumulations, or assistance in intervention. CT is also relatively quick and a staple of the emergency department and is ideal for evaluation of bone damage as well as vascular concerns and lung tissue. The final scenario is for a patient presenting with a chronic cough with suspicion of interstitial lung disease. This chronic cough, along with shortness of breath and the feeling of tightness when breathing, along with other associated symptoms, again, begin with a chest x-ray. This can show some hallmark signs as well as rule out or identify other diagnostic considerations. The next level is high resolution CT or HRCT, which is a CT scan with higher resolution and thinner slices. This provides more detailed images of the smaller pulmonary structures. Finally, if additional imaging needs are needed, but this is rare, a MRI would be the next logical step. And that concludes our quick summary.